On this week's episode of the Cena Nerd Podcast, we discuss episodes 3 through 5 of Marvel's Echo. What do we think about it? Sit back and enjoy our discussion as we celebrate our 7th anniversary together coming up now. Greetings, nerds. This is Cena Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont, and with me as always is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well. Happy seventh anniversary. Yes. Um, I was going to say something about that, and then as I started the intro, I completely <laughs> <laughs> Well, you brought it up, uh, I guess, a couple of weeks ago that it was that it was coming, and then I looked at the calendar, and I was just like, wow, it's like Saturday will be seven years to the day to release of our first podcast together. It's always weird to me because I feel as though every year, I think always the first, like the first recording in January, (laughs) but it's not. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And it just, it confuses me. And I, looking back retrospectively, I know why it's at the end of the month, but it's just funny. Um, But but yeah, it's been seven years. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want, I mean, as far as like published, I know we, we I know I did that tryout with you and uh, one of your former co-hosts, um, I guess that prior December, but I always, I always like to use the, the official published one as the, the, uh, as our anniversary date. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a very different show at that yeah. time. And yeah. um, so yeah, man, seven years. Um yeah. All right, to get us started tonight, um, I didn't watch this um, because I'm trying to go into it blind. Mm. Um, I feel as though I did watch like one of the first trailers for it, just like a little bit, but not really paying too much of close attention. But um, did you watch the Avatar, Avatar, The Last Airbender live action trailer? I did. And not the 2010 one. This, just to be clear, this is the, the one coming to Netflix next month, and um, it was pretty cool, actually. So, <laughs> the sorry, uh, sorry. Yeah. just the idea that somebody would think that I'm asking about a trailer for a movie <laughs> that came out in 2010. It's just, it just got me. I, yeah, <laughs> I just, 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 I just bring that that up because. I just want to make sure people are clear. <laughs> yeah, but still, it's not like we're talking about a movie called that. It, we're talking about the anyway. Anyway, I yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. so you did watch it. How did you like it? First of all, it was I have to give Netflix credit because they had this really cool lead up to the trailer, mm-hmm. uh, where uh, they had you. It was. Uh, sort of like a role playing thing where one of the characters was on a quest and it was like, I guess it, it dropped about an hour before the the drop of the trailer. I guess this was Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday of this week, but anyway, uh, but it had the various quests for the different, the different elements that you would, would go through and, uh, you know, to pull on the map to just sort of, and you would, you know, assemble the map and it, and it led up to the trailer itself, which the trailer itself, I mean, it was, was really, really, I, I super enjoyed it. I, um, you know, I was, I'm you know, familiar with Avatar. My kids watched the, uh, the show when they were younger and, you know, I casually watched it. So I'm not like steeped in the, in, uh, in the, um, uh, mythology and the story and stuff i mean I'm, I'm aware of like the four elements and and the sort of general um story as far as you know about the the various benders with the elements and, and all but um but yeah i mean it, it looks like it's i'm looking forward to to this this live action ad- adaptation and uh hopefully it goes the way that we we went with one piece uh or like last year where uh we you know we had something that was adapted from anime to, to live action and and it was very well received so that's my thoughts on the trailer yeah yeah and we will be breaking that down starting at the end of february so be on the lookout for that <laughs> the other trailer that um i did watch about 
like less than an hour ago yeah. because Will sent it to me and that's I what, just laughed the entire time. But yeah, what? that that's actually what I discovered it. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. you you sent it. To, okay. <laughs> Yeah, literally. I just, I literally just found, I just like, huh, I, I happened to see it. Um, and I sent it to you and I was like, let me add this, quickly add this to the rundown. So what we're talking about is um, Calamity Jane trailer um, starring Emily Bett Ricards. And it looks like Stephen Amell is in it, but it kind of sounds like he gets killed and that's why she's on her revenge. Um, yeah. This doesn't look good. <laughs> doesn't look good. Um, yeah. So that is to sum up my thought on this. Yeah, this doesn't look good. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I guess it's notable in the sense that of that, of course, we have a lot of folks who have been along with us on this journey for the last seven years who were Arrowverse fans and fans of the show Arrow, and this is the first time since the show ended um well four years ago now uh that uh they've been on screen together so yeah so she's playing calamity jane uh steven is uh, wild bill hitchcock and uh who they you know obviously these are uh, real life people i guess they've adapted their story into this you know fix this um film that uh is coming out uh, on february 2nd uh, both theatrical and i guess i guess the trailer had it digital on Tubi, so which is one of the streaming services so uh so yes yeah, so it'll be uh, in theaters if in your area and also if you just want to just watch it at home on streaming uh, yeah did you watch the roadhouse trailer i have not uh, i was planning on oh really planning on, yeah <laughs> I, was, I planned yeah i was planning on it but uh, i was like i yeah i hadn't had a chance to yet yeah um it looks so bad <laughs> I don't know how they got Jake Gyllenhaal to do this. Yeah. Um it looks so it it's it it looks like a made for TV movie. Yeah, yeah. Like well, it, it's so low budget. I mean it's not mm -hmm. as low budget as Clemanity Jane, and I'm never gonna be able to say that right. Um, but but it looks very low budget and they spent all their money on Jake Gyllenhaal. And mm -hmm. it just and watching the trailer, you've just watched the movie, so yeah. Well, I mean, if I want to watch Roadhouse, I could just like turn on YouTube TV or any if you have still have cable, it's going to be on somewhere because that the original is always on. Um, but I did, interestingly enough, I even though I haven't watched the trailer, I did happen to see the news about how the director of the new Amazon Prime series uh was very upset that the film that the um this version of roadhouse did not get a theatrical release and going straight to streaming and 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 from what you what you said it, i can i can understand why <laughs> and that it went straight to streaming and not amazon's like nope we're not putting this on the theater and losing a bunch of money no what do you mean um new amazon director like oh what? yeah so you know this is i think this this is not this is this so, roadhouse it's not it's streaming it's not going to um right, right. no i understand that yeah but yeah the so he was the director was not, the director okay yeah the director was pissed off that amazon is not okay. giving it a theatrical release at but all this is a movie it's not a tv show right okay yeah see it's their seven year anniversary and i'm just very confused as what we're talking about Today. I don't know so why. The first time listening to us, this is how our new segment goes, y'all. This is <laughs> yeah, yeah. Apparently, apparently, because I just I'm listening. I swear, but I don't I don't know what is happening. Um, that is it for the news. Will, is there anything you want to talk about that you've been watching lately? Um, I did watch the first episode of Zorro that was also on Amazon. Uh, it was okay. It was fine. I haven't gone back to it. I probably will at some point. But uh, if it was a, it was one. Of, it was produced in Spain, and and it's one of those shows that is better to watch it in the original language instead of turning on the the dub, uh, dubbing with English. Because if you do, then it just it just loses all its flavor and just really it's just like a really bad like old uh, kung fu theater film. So, um, 
yeah it, it was it was a fresh take of that on that character um and i i i like the way that, that they sort of set up the universe as far as you know blending some of the elements that we that we're going to get into here with uh, echo here in a moment where uh you you did have some respect given to some of the native american and indigenous people uh in california at the time uh but then of course you have this new zorro who shows up and um and how that all sort of goes into into uh him trying to discover uh, the, uh, what happened to someone in his family and um so yeah i thought it was like i said it was it, it, it was a good start I just, i've just gotten busy with things this week and i hadn't had a chance to go back to it but uh i'll, I'll definitely finish it out um as, you as better because you were making a pitch for us to cover it and i I'm was like, what yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. no no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was, I was. I mean, I think, yeah, it's one of those. It was definitely one of those shows. I think I would just like, as as you noted, some things are just for casual viewing, and and some things are here for the pod. And this is definitely one I would say is more casual viewing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there are only so many things that will can force me to watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, it's even, it gets even funnier too because you thought I was trying to push us, push for us to watch to discuss uh, Mary and my husband, which I was like, no, 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 that's that's also when I was going to keep on my casual watch list, not not one for the podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. All, all right. Is is that is that it? Well, unless you have something you had that really. you discovered recently. Okay. Not really. Not not this week. No. Okay. Um. Okay, so let's get into Echo, which neither Will or I have thought about since we finished watching the fifth episode. Um, yeah, so, so Will, why don't you start off? What are your thoughts on the last three episodes of Echo? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Wow, well, yeah, yeah. So, good night, everybody. Our thoughts on Echo was just summed up by Sarah. No. <laughs> No, it was um, it was okay. It was it was fun. It really was fun. I think this. I, I and I know before we started recording, I I, I kind of joked that I'm, I'm done with superheroes for a bit, uh, and I don't know if it's because of just recency let down by this show, or if it's just uh, I just need to need a little break from from marvel and the dc world for 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 a moment which is probably good that they're spreading things out uh this year uh and uh because i just felt like this show had so much potential mm -hmm. it had so much potential it really did and i will say that this third you know we're discussing episode three two five tonight and i will say that the, this third episode was the, really the first time i really connected with the character but it, but at the same time, I don't know if it was the editing. I don't know if it was the story choices that were made as far as like they were trying to convey how distant and uh, arm's length that Maya was trying to keep everyone as far as as far as her family away. If they if the if the goal of the of the story and the direction and for us as viewers to to step into Maya's shoes as far as being detached and not emotionally invested in the rest of their family and everything, then they succeeded. Um, because that's that's how I felt with all five episodes. I just never felt emotionally invested in this story and in the supporting characters and and then it and it came which is really sad because, as we talked about last week, I, I love the, the the storytelling that they were doing with the indigenous uh, Choctaw Indians and Native Americans, and 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 there's so many elements there that they could have woven through. I mean, they did try to do the whole matriarchal weaving through of you know with the, each opening of of four to five episodes and. 
and and all that and and all but i just i don't know it just i just i just felt disappointed that marvel had a had a potential for a really outstanding series here and either due to budgeting or just they just are unsure of what direction they want to go in these days or and unsure of what the show was supposed to be then i think it, it, it undermined what could have been a, a very special project yeah um i don't know if i would say i'm let down or disappointed in this show because honestly this is it probably met expectations because i wasn't going into the show thinking like it would be a standout um Mm -hmm. and it would blow me away i know high expectations um i had low expectations and it's not like they exceeded them by any mean i'm just like underwhelmed by everything this show had to offer and i what i noticed throughout the last three episodes because this is when we got Fisk Mm -hmm. is I Fisk is a fascinating character Um, but even he felt underdeveloped in this Mm -hmm. show which I think is just par for the course (laughs) (laughs) because because I understand that it's not that they wanted us to feel like what you were saying about that detachment, because what we were supposed to understand is all goes back to Fisk and just how we were supposed to understand how Maya has been holding on to this grudge and this pain Mm -hmm. of feeling as though as a young girl, they blamed her for her mom's death and her father for her mom's death and were kicked out of the family and of their home of this of Oklahoma in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And they, and then, and then she, she, her father starts working for Fisk again and she ends up meeting Fisk. And even after his death, like Fisk is there, like they, he started the manipulation, the grooming way early on for Maya. Mm-hmm. So it made sense to me why Maya was behaving the way she was towards her family. But what was still underdeveloped were two things that I think really missed this show um, being captivating and emotionally charge was that you still don't quite understand the grandma and the grandpa like the family's perspective on Maya and that dynamic like Mm -hmm. we hardly spent any time with Bonnie yeah (laughs) I also still don't really understand why she's a cousin but she's not Henry's daughter like who who else is she the daughter of I don't get it I don't understand how she's a cousin just saying I also don't quite understand Fisk and we never really got a good moment of why Maya Mm -hmm. like, like I want, there Mm -hmm. should have been an episode told through Fisk's perspective. Yeah. Yeah. There should have been that. And, and at the end, from what I understand, what I've heard is basically what she does to him is to free in his mind free that pain that he's been holding on so that he could quote unquote become a better person yeah Hmm. (laughs) i don't know if that silence was because like no 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 that's not right but i'm no no i completely agree with you like that's what but it's still because we don't really understand um fixed motive fix motivation for his love and like at one point he even gives Maya the hammer to kill him like he he will not hurt her which i understood now yeah, yeah. i understood that but i still don't quite understand why not yeah. like 
He would hurt everyone else. Like, what was his end game here? <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah. I, I kind of want to understand what was his end game with capturing the grandma. Like, at that point, was he like, okay, gloves are off. I will beat your ass. Um, but would he kill her? Like, I don't, I don't know. I'm still, I don't, there's a lot of that. And, and so at the end of the day, these two forces of her family in Oklahoma and Fisk, you're, you were not, we're not fully understanding their behavior towards Maya. And that's why I feel like overall, this is an undercooked show unfortunately. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's, those, those are all excellent points. Uh, and that's where, I, and that's where I guess where I was going to, um, and, and from a different perspective, um, in, in, in that I felt it, that where I was just kind of let down because there were just element, there were just a lot of elements that if they had like, you know, cause originally this show was supposed to be six episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, and it cut it back to five and this is one of those things where you know we've talked about this with other like with like the miss marble for example where um for whatever reason you know they they chop some key points you know they chopped it for time or whatever and 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 in doing so it, it undercooks certain aspects like you were saying what's this motivation for 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 maya you know why like, to, you know, what's you know, as far as Bonnie, the, their Bonnie and Maya's relationship, and you know, they they had a, just a few moments of exposition as far as like you didn't write me back, you know, you went away, but you know, what's Henry's motivations, for example? I mean, that was another thing because I was like, whenever I think in the second episode, I was like, now like, is he gonna like be the heel that that uh, you know, whenever she return, Maya returns to Oklahoma, you know, he's also working for Fisk. Is he gonna be the you know, you know, they were. It was kind of ambiguous as far as what the relationship was there, and and but then of course in the third episode we see that oh no he you know the Fisk's gang is tying him up and stuff and he's going to help Maya out. But you just, really thought Henry was going to turn in Maya? Well, I no, thought it was I just, clear who was going to turn in Maya. <laughs> yeah, no, no. It was just. I mean, they tried to like make it ambiguous. I don't. That's, I don't agree. They with tried, that. but it, okay. yeah. No, I mean, I mean that, that's that's just my perspective. I mean, I'm just saying mm-hmm. that's. I mean, you and you, yeah. I mean, you you saw it. I I mean, I, I I took it. They were trying to make it ambiguous, and it just didn't. There were just elements of it that, uh, it just. There were elements of his pers- of of his character development or like thereof that just didn't just just didn't flow. Um, right. Because I I just think that his character was very flawed, but not in like a good flawed character way. It's just to your point, he works for Fisk. His yeah. granddaughter, who he or not his granddaughter, sorry, his his niece who comes into town, he knows shot Fisk. Mm-hmm. And and so there, okay, you gotta protect your niece or you got to turn her in and you try to protect your, your niece, but you don't really do at all a good job. Um, probably because you haven't talked in forever. Like, yeah. like I think they could have done more with, and that you could say this about so many of her family members. Yeah. Why didn't he go to, um, and I think she does say this at once. Why didn't you come and get me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. My father died. You left me. Yeah. So so there could have been more. I, just, just thinking out loud, I think that with these with these family characters, we never fully get their perspective. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it's told through Maya's perspective, but it's not enough. Yeah. To fully get invested in these side characters and in terms of their con- their complications with having Maya back home, mm-hmm. uh, because you can say the same thing about Grandma. the 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 scene where Maya finally comes and talks to Grandma was nice, 
but it didn't get to me. Like I huh. didn't, I, I really didn't understand why she started breaking down crying. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I just, I was like, okay, what's going on here? And I still don't feel like there's so much incompleteness to it all. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. was that a full conversation or did we just walk out halfway through? I, I don't feel like we have any closure here. So I, yeah, I just, I think to your point with Henry, it's very similar to grandma who had a good a good outline of what role she would play in this story. But I think overall it wasn't, it wasn't effective because the, she wasn't a fully fleshed out character. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and yeah, you could say that about a, a lot of not only the characters, but a lot of elements of the show. Mm -hmm. um, and it, and it is, it is kind of annoying because because of the um, inclusivity yeah. that this show brings to the MCU, to mm -hmm. Disney Plus, um, I don't. I've mentioned this show a few times. <laughs> I don't know if Will's <laughs> gonna remember the show that I'm gonna bring up, but it's my go-to show when we talk about sign language. Is there is an old ABC Family show called Switch at Birth. I watched it. And it's a great show. Very weird premise. Great show. A f like, I believe there's at least one or two episodes fully done in sign language. Mm. Um, subtitles and all. You don't hear any talking. And, and so, and so that's, it's just sad because there's, they did such a good job with the signing and um they killed the interpreter <laughs> yeah i personally when i saw that scene i was like that's will's fault will called <laughs> 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 but when that scene happened i was just, i like if she's walking away i'm like oh they're gonna kill her <laughs> like <laughs> how do they let her go she's just been privy to all of this information which yep. matt like it's so it's so funny like and Anyways, so yeah, but I I, I, I laugh at that, and I laughed when I got the show notes from you, and you had the uh, uh, thing about these, you know, secure talk, you know, the technology for for sign and whatnot. But it was, but, but that's so that again, that's that's those are that's one of the elements of the show that I did like, you know, because I feel like I've been like bashing on it here for the last you know few minutes. Uh, the the thing about Fisk. And some of the, the some of the elements that they did develop with him, he you know he treated he you know he was so, he was ne he was never really and even Maya calls him out on it you know you never learned you never learned how to how to sign mm -hmm. and you know and he you know and instead of like taking the element taking the time to like really to learn sign language American sign language he just you know comes up with another disposable thing in a sense it, it, with with his tech and you know putting the contact in her eye and all that kind of stuff. So you can see the, you know, the, the computer generated stuff. Um, and it, but it, but it was a disposable thing, just like the, just like the interpreters. And, and it just really was a good illumination into him as a character. So the, like, so, and, and, and how he just, you know, treats people as commodities or just things that could be disposed of when, when their usefulness is gone. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think also what people forget about having characters who have disabilities mm -hmm. is that honestly, it makes the story, it makes a, a, um, a genre like a comic book TV show that we've seen so many, so, so many whether it's in short form, in form of a movie, or long form, in, for, in form of a TV show. Um, but now you have a disability at play with your hero. And so the way they fight is they have to be more creative. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it just it, it brings more creativity to the overall production itself. 
where yeah. where I thought he was giving her something like to knock her out, and then you realize, oh, he put something in her eye. Oh, I get it now. It's technology. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's so lazy. <laughs> like my God. Yeah. What the heck? But that's actually really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, yeah, and, and, yeah. And also, I uh, think to that to your point, like when uh, Henry and Bonnie, whenever they were in the roller rink, and uh, with Zane, and and use you know using the using the sign language there to 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 really communicate what was going on. So yeah. those were good uses of like showing. You know how you can adapt, and how and, and how people with disabilities adapt to situations. Right. Um, can I point it, out one thing about that roller rink um, yeah. scene, and what you just brought up about the amusing sign language? Let's be honest. Hmm? They, he could Henry could have just told Bonnie what was going on. The 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 um the stupid people who were holding them hostage wouldn't have even figured that out. Like he sure. could have. Like, like they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they had no idea what was going on. I don't even think they've ever shot a gun in their life the way yeah. they were holding those. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, yeah. But but yeah. yeah, and and I think this goes back to last week when I kept bringing up Daredevil. Is again, you have a hero who's blind, and between what I've seen Daredevil and some of the other Netflix shows do in the past in terms of fight sequences, they nailed that here too. Like the roller ring sequence was a great fight sequence as well. And and I don't know, I find it fascinating how a lot of the bigger movies or tentpole shows I've seen from Marvel and arguably DC, it's the fighting is the least creative mm -hmm. from my perspective. Mm -hmm. And yet a street level um hero like Echo or Daredevil, they or Punisher, their fighting just feels so much and it might have to do with a like the lack of superhero powers, just because yeah. I'll admit the worst kind of quote unquote fight sequence arguably is at the end <laughs> when everyone <laughs> powers up. Like it's yeah. just it's silly yeah. and and it just feels gimmicky mm -hmm. when but when she is like combative, hand to hand, fist um, combat, I think that's why I've always been impressed with any fight sequence with Fisk, um, because that's he, his strength is literally his power, quote unquote, um, yeah. among other things. But it's just it feels so much more brutal. Um, and and I I I wonder if they're going to lean into that more with some of the heroes um, that we're expected to see within the next few years. Um, but here's my question for you, Will. Yeah. And I couldn't help but think about this all Sunday afternoon, the three hours I was watching Echo. Yeah. Why the heck is this rated R? That's a good question. I mean, other than this, I mean. It gets back to my earlier point. I don't know. This show is confused <laughs> about what tone it wanted to go. Because I mean, it... <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I mean, the only the, the speaking of the roller rink, the the only scene in this whole show that where I felt like it may come close to earning that was whenever uh, Vicky was shot. Yeah. Um, um. Because even even with Fisk, whenever he like you know, beat down the, the hawk dog vendor. I mean, I was just like, yeah, I mean, we saw that in the trailer. Uh, and, and, and there was really nothing else in here that really warranted a, a TVMA, in my or, opinion. Or, like, couldn't be edited around to yeah. make it not rated R. Like, it, it was weird to me how I think one of the, um, like not a teaser, but something to get the viewers was this mm -hmm. is a rated R DC yep. Plus, Disney Plus show, yep. and yet we're watching and we're like, it was well, complete, certainly Disney Plus. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a complete marketing thing. Honestly, I mean, it really I felt it when when it gets down to it, 
uh the the whole tvma was just then you gotta like you know fill out your disney plus code to be able to watch it it was a complete marketing thing just to try to get viewers in uh because like i said other than the vicky scene all the other stuff i mean i've seen you know you see that like in tv 14 <laughs> or whatever it other was the next level down from tvma uh it wasn't that like brutal um right. but speaking yeah but speaking to your point about the uh, things moving forward i did see where they did hire the um i think the fight court choreographer from the daredevil and the, all the marvel netflix series shows to mm-hmm. uh to come to to do some work uh i think with the with daredevil uh not daredevil yeah daredevil uh, born again since they have uh, resumed production this week um so so we'll probably start to your point about some of the fight choreography that, and that that really stands out uh, we'll probably see more of that uh in in the next few marvel spotlight uh programs as far as with daredevil and, and anything else that may come in, in in this universe what um so with these episodes yeah um, we talked last week about how they were doing this thing where the episode opens with mm-hmm. kind of a flashback to a previous ancestor in yeah. this in Maya's line. And um, episode three's opening was done very differently because it was a very old school picture show opening sequence uh, with Tuklu, Tuklu's, uh story. Uh, what were your thoughts about that uh, picture show? <laughs> Uh, I felt it was gimmicky. Was it jarring or? I didn't like it. I thought it was too gimmicky. Yeah. It went and it went too long. Fair. They could they could have used that time to develop Grandma and, and buy a story. I mean, it, it it was it just went too. I mean, it just went too long, and it was very gimmicky. I just did, I didn't. That was the one. The first two, okay, I was like, I liked. You know, I, I bought the, the the stick ball. I bought those. This one just felt like, yeah, I, I've already said what I felt like. What I felt like, like it felt. Yeah, yeah. I in the moment, I was just like, oh, this is creative. But to your point, it went on way too long. <laughs> yeah. Way too long to be interesting, and a, and then it got. It's a what? Yeah, I was gonna say, is this Echo story or is this like this uh, this you know this ancestor story? I mean, I get, I mean, right. I get the point that yes, it, it it all ties together there at the end where you know when when Maya and Grandma do talk and the whole you know and the, and the mother talk and the, you know the Echo and uh, it, I get it. it, it did tie together, but it just. Yeah, but I just thought that that third that that this beginning of the third episode went a bit long, and even quite frankly, even the fourth one with 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 Fisk and, and Maya, um, whenever she was a child, uh, I thought went a bit long. Yeah, yeah, I I think a lot of the opening stuff went a bit yeah. long. Yeah. But um, but that one just stood out to me because it was so different from mm-hmm. all the other ones in terms of. It was all black and white. They were doing a play on a picture show. And I mean, kind of creatively cool, too, because you um, you don't hear anything. It's not yeah. a talkie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, I did appreciate and, that. Well, yeah. I appreciate what they were doing. I Again, like most things I have talked about, they it wasn't quite 100 percent effective. Yeah. Um, so, so, but, um, talking about this and talking about, um, American Sign Language just reminded me of, I did watch, um, the movie that's one of the movies that was nominated for a lot of Oscars or a few Oscars, and it's been in award season, but Anatomy of a Fall. Mm. It's the foreign movie. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, but, um, the brief summary of the movie is the um, it takes place. Well, it takes place in France, I believe in France. And um, this woman, this writer is accused 
of killing her husband because he he falls and there's no witnesses and there's nothing there there's nothing like the police are investigating like okay well what happened and it just talks about her and her son is blind okay so so again you have you have a a quote unquote witness but he can't see mm. so so and he's also very young so how liable is he in terms of what he says about his dad his mom and what happened that day of the fall um and it's very it, it goes on too long but i i think it definitely could have shaved like 20 to 30 minutes off of that movie but it goes into some very interesting um marital dynamics and just issues um but um yeah yeah so so anyways um that's a random art house foreign movie that (laughs) that it just it just is um like i said before sometimes when you have characters in these movies or in these shows with disabilities, the creative choices of explaining the story or being able to back these characters in a wall to a wall mm-hmm. or write these characters to a wall that they have to get out of yeah. with these disabilities, it, it opens up a lot of creative, a yeah. lot more creative freedom. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, and to your to to that point, like with uh, with my inner prosthetic leg, I mean, because she, you know, she she's you know she has you know not only is she uh, deaf, but she also has you know she's also because of the accident, um, you know, she lost the use of her right leg without the prosthetic, and 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 how at least in the epi- third episode uh, where again she you know because she became very resourceful by having like the knife in the in the boot so that when you know you know she 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 used that disadvantage to an advantage whenever it was time to whenever she got tied up and and um and you know and to your point it does allow for some creative storytelling as far as instead of like you know using brute strength to get out of a situation it's like okay i, I don't here's what i can do to like get out of this and then i did have i kind of i did have like the little almost macgyver is a moment uh where she was using the um tools and stuff and in, in the roller rink to uh you know to to take out the uh, with the laser pointer and stuff to, to take out the uh people there you know holding them uh captivity in, in, in the in the rink so those are you know so they're like like i said there are all these nice elements in the show it's just it just certain things went too long where they could have been cut certain things were underbaked as far as the characters i mean you know and the thing that really pissed me off quite frankly at the end was grandpa was not at the cookout at the end <laughs> i like the i like the grandpa and, and but it gets to i was like but the, i was like man see this is this is what's wrong with this show as i was watching that whole sequence um i was like they just under they just undercut these relationships with these people <laughs> even yeah. though they tried to like you know they did tr- and it, but you know they, and it, it, they entered the element of you know grandma and grandpa being separated um right, right. um and, and i and i guess we're supposed to like infer because of what happened um all those years ago when when maya's mother was killed uh that was the the breaking point but again they just you know just like oh was, we'll just throw this in here they're estranged. <laughs> yeah, um, I uh, I'm I'm kind of with you though. What you said at the very beginning, where I don't know if it's just like I need a break, but I'm glad that we're not getting another comic book genre show or movie for a little bit this year. Mm-hmm. Um, just because last year there's so much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and I think I was, I think that it just, I think like even from based on what I've seen in the show, some of the directors and producers are kind of also burnt out on it, you know, yeah. 
and yeah. not giving these stories enough love and attention to make them as good as what the product that we've been given in the past. Mm -hmm. So I, I think overall Disney's strategy specifically this year in terms of the MCU shows and movies we're going to get is very needed. Mm -hmm. And I hope it just sets us up for an even more awesome 2025. Yeah. Uh, but, but I am looking forward to, because for listeners, um, we, we did talk a lot about what we're going to cover. And so next week we're going to kick off Reacher season two, and then we're going all in on the spies. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna and then after next week we're gonna add on mr and mrs smith um the new amazon show so so we're going from disney plus we're going over to amazon and then by the end of february we're gonna start to add on netflix with yep. last air render and by the end of march uh is it three bodies one problem three body show yeah three bodies okay. I yeah, the, th swear, the three body, the three body, the three, the three body problem. Yeah. The three body. Okay. I was, I was about to say like the opposite, like the one body, three problems. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably going, but we're, we're, I, I find it interesting that like we started off this year with Disney plus now we're headed over to Amazon for a few shows and then we're going to head over to, to, um, Netflix for a few shows where where it makes me want to think at the end of this year when we go through our top five lists of whatever um, if we if we're going to be taking notes enough to be able to say okay well, out of all the streaming services who won because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's gonna it might end up being a battle I mean Max yeah. has is gonna have some offerings soon enough and mm -hmm. and you never know where the third and fourth quarter will take us but but yeah, yeah. so so we're we're not we're we're getting out of this genre to an extent because let's face it. Reacher is a little bit of his own real life uh, superhero. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. the man is ripped. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real, for real. And we will get, we will touch a little bit of superhero stuff again, but it, it, in, in the Amazon world because we did get the uh, part two of uh, Invincible will also return in March. So, and we'll figure out where we're going to squeeze that in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Any um, ending thoughts on Maya before we head out of here? No, I think uh, we pretty covered it pretty well tonight. Um, it was like I said, it was a series with a, a lot of potential, and um, and maybe we'll see Maya the way that the the show ended uh, with uh, Kingpin getting the idea to run for mayor and the in the end credit there. Um, you know, maybe that'll lead into Daredevil Born Again. I, I'm not familiar with, I, I, I will freely admit, I never read the the comic book adaptation or comic book version of that storyline. So I don't know if he runs for Marinette or not, but at least it was teased in the in, 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 end, of, end of Echo here. So uh, so maybe we'll see Maya again uh, in, in that show when it, uh, when it finishes up production, which apparently they've cut back on that whole 18 episode run that they were talking about to something shorter. So. We'll see. We'll see. Um, and that on that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me uh, on Twitter, also known as X, at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. And you can find me there, too, at S.J. Belmont, S-J-B-E-L-M-O-N-T. How about you? You know, it's our seventh year anniversary. For those who have listened to us since year one <laughs> <laughs> let us know give us a shout out and if you found us between year one and year now let us know when you found us why you're still listening to us and we appreciate all of your love and support and you can send us all of that information and follow us on 
X, formerly known as Twitter, at Scene and Nerd, friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd, and visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome.